Right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let us start because we have a hefty amount of stuff to go through. And um, I'm hoping within the hour or two we can cover it, if not uh, a tad more. First of all, uh, thank you all uh, for being here. My name is Hamid Poor. Uh, I will be your uh, lecturer, guest lecturer for the duration of the hour or two. Uh, a little about myself, I was uh, a proud and still am a proud EVUD-ish uh, member. I, I grew up in the Nolsa campus with our very own cat over here and a few other people and had uh, some of the best times of my uh, life down there and of course with the NSC. The Nolsa campus is one of my favorite places to be, have made fantastic friends with the AMC and a few people in the Wolfram campus. Uh, it is a fantastic place to be, Eve University, and uh, hopefully you're having fun and more importantly learning shit. Right. Go ahead and click on this link. This will bring us to a familiar link for some of you who were here last week uh, to our A University slide 101. We're going to go through some of it. Now, we have a massive canvas to paint today. So we're going to be using uh, broad um, brush strokes to, to, to go through most of it. We're going to leave the fine tweaking and the detail drawing for you guys as time progresses in your EVE career. But we will be touching on the general things, the more important things and the important things. And hopefully uh, you'll get something out of it. Now, before we go on to, to the slideshow and fitting one on one as a whole, uh, why PyFi? Why, um, why do people insist on learning, as in the keyword learning, how to fit ships in EVE Online using PyFi or EFT? Mostly because it's effective. You don't have to faff about with ISK, you don't have to be even in the game to do this. You open a third party client, uh, PyFi itself in this case, and then you start away learning what mod goes where, what ship is what, uh, uh, plenty of reading, plenty of um, tweaking about, and it's great fun, especially if you're one of those people that is generally curious in nature. Also, you can play around with multiple ships, and PyFar has charts and graphs and a vast range of other tools that can assist you in either identifying whether your weapon systems are effective versus smaller ships, bigger ships, ships coming from different angles, what type of damage is best suited for what enemies that you are encountering. There's a lot of these little things. Uh, what kind of implants you, you might need in order to fit a very tight fitting ship that's really tight on CPU, etc. So it's generally a, a, a wonderful tool to master. And my advice to most of the people who start off is if you master it sooner than later in your EVE career, it will not only save quite a chunk of ISK, uh, avoiding terrible fittings or generally faffing around with the nightmare oh my god the nightmare which is Gita, especially if you're new and generally you will learn faster with that said let's start off let's go through the the slideshows um and then get to uh the the practical which is actually fitting um our ship we're going to aim to fit two ships today at the very least one will be a brawler one will be a kiter which generally generally speaking um are the two types of main battle mo modes of combat in EVE Online. There are many more ways you can fit different ships. There are many more modes of play. For today, we're going to be aiming to do some PvP ships. You can also fit PvE ships, exploration ships, etc. You name it. Now, that said, go on and click on your slideshow and go ahead to slide number three. So you're pushing on, ignoring slide two, you're going straight to three. Now, if you're new to EVE within the first week, you have definitely opened one of these uh, windows, your uh, ship fitting, which is usually on the left side of your um, uh, screen in your in-game. And this very horrendous um, fitting window has popped up, and it's quite a confusing thing when you're, when, you're, when you're fairly new. If you're a seasoned player, this to you is, is, is second nature. You will just love this. You will tweak this. You will take this out. You will get it killed, and you will love it. For today, we're going to roughly touch on what slide number three is slide number three represents the ship you are flying in the current picture we have a proteus plural is protei not proteuses please this is important <laughs> so uh the current proteus in our picture you will see that he is generally fitted full on full with its subsystems and we're going to go and, and crack this down now i'm going to start with the top left top left of your little corner of your picture will be your torrent hard points Ships in EVE Online, when they come to combat, they either have torrent hardpoints or missile hardpoints, meaning that they either put guns on them or missile launchers on them. In the case of this protea in this picture, it has four torrent hardpoints and zero to the very right missile hardpoints. The weapons as a whole, again, most of you know this, I apologize for having to repeat it, but again, we're just trying to cover most of the basics for our younger crowd. High slots, when they say high slots, is usually where you keep your guns. You may have your utility height slots, such as in the case of this protei here, your 
that's the, the red indicator onto it, your uh, cloaking device and your probe launcher. High slots are good. Now, a good way to, to see what kind of ship you're flying, the more high slots you have, the more of an attack ship you are. And the more high slots you are, it's pretty much a good sign that you really need to get in there, shoot something really quickly and probably not stick around. Because a lot of high slots means you don't have a lot of low slots or, or mid slots. Which brings us to low slots and mid slots. Universally speaking, low slots and mid slots are either used to either shield tank or armor tank your um, ship. Meaning that you'll have more hit points to die slower. In the case of the Protea to the very right, it currently, with its current subsystem setting, has three mid slots. Again, right of this picture. It has a micro warp drive, which is the faster of the two propulsions, the afterburner and the micro warp drive. The Protea has micro warp drive, a web of fire, which is the middle one in your mid slots, and of course, uh, in the case, probably a scram by the color of it. I can't quite tell. Now, mid slots are good. We love mid slots. You love mid slots, mostly because a lot of mid slots mean you can put shield mods and shield tank the bejesus out of stuff and shield tanks means you're generally faster than whoever is low slot armoring mid slot means you can put serious amount of e-war and you can either range damp people e-war the the the, the, the bejee monkey out of them and they quite will, will, will they will rage in local quite a bit if you have a lot of mid slots and use them effectively tackle mods as a whole predominantly all of them actually are mid slot so if you need to grab someone, grab somebody's ship, make his life a living hell, mid slots are the way to go. So we love mid slots. Come down to uh, low slots. Now before we go to low slots, at the very bottom right corner, you have two things, CPU and power grid. Now CPU and power grid, you will uh, hate these. They come with all your ships, of course, you, and they're always limited. They're, you just you will never have enough of them, CPU and power grid. You will never have enough of them. The bigger your ship gets, the bigger amount, uh, the, the more power grid you'll have to work with. Uh, though sadly, the more more power intense the mods will be. CPU is uh, the same thing. So it's balancing ships with CPU requirements and power grid requirements is a bit of a it's 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 it's, it's that of being the Pi Fi warrior, fitting things so well that you use the most amount of CPU and power grid while if effectively fitting the most effective ship setup for, here's the keyword, for the current task at hand. There is no thing, there is no such thing as universal fitted ships for universal things in EVE Online. Everything is specific. Everything in EVE has the word depends attached to it. Now, moving on from CPU to power grids and balancing your mods in which to, to use lower or less CPU and power grid is an important thing. Now, bear in mind, generally speaking, here's a keyword, generally speaking, your mid slots, your mid slots use a lot of CPU, your low slots use power grids as a whole, give or take. Your guns use both, they're, they're that annoying. Now, going on to your low slots is the bottom section of this. In the case of the Protea, you see that to the very far left, it has plates. And of course, uh, a damage mod in the middle and a couple of um, mag, uh, uh, the, the two, two which of course, and a few hardeners attached. Now, again, this Protei is armor tanked by the very look of that, given that it's low slots or armor. To the left side of the Protei, you have your subsystems. Your subsystems are predominantly Tech 3 stuff for your cruisers. Moving on, these things called rigs. They are important for calibration at the very end. Once you Once you've fitted your ship, you'll have a little bit of room to either add more CPU, add more power grid, add more damage to some mod, add a little bit more shield to something else, and this is where rigs come into hand. They come in Tech 1s and Tech 2s, and usually Tech 2s are horrendously expensive, and for most of your ships, you're going to go Tech 1. I mean, it's just not, it's not worth Tech 2s. They, however, have their own calibration numbers. If you fit three rigs that go above the calibration of your ship, meaning in the case of the Protei, if you look at calibration to the far left, it has about 400-ish, and I think, I think you can't quite see, but I think he's fit 350 or exactly 400 on, on, this, on this Protei. So um, you cannot fit the biggest rigs that you want on any ship. It does not work like that, sadly. So you have to go by the calibration number. We'll get to this more when we're fitting ships. Let's, let's move on to page four, if possible, page four. The skill book page is a very good page to go by if you want to train into. If you're fairly new in EVE and you want to start fitting ship properly, you want to be able to train all of these up as fast as you can. 
So go ahead and put them on in your queues, especially the first two ones that the fitting um, slide says very important skills. You want to you want to push them both to five as soon as you can. Use this page as a reference and just crack on, especially with that weapon upgrade number three. It helps you put more guns on your ship in more, more ease. Please move to page five. I repeat, page five, please. Now, moving on to fitting mods. Now, when you're fitting your ships and you've put all your guns in and your defensive mods and, of course, your uh, tank, sometimes you're going to need extra CPU. You're going to need extra power grid. Then This is where these mods come into hand. The fitting mods right here, you see, in slide number five, page number five of this slide, are your core processor, your reactor control unit, all the way down to the rig, the ancillary current router, or the ACR for short. So these will help you fit either if you're lower in skill or you need to fit a ship very tight with something weapon-wise, they will be your friends. And we're going to be using one or two of these. At the very least, the ancillary current router is a usual fit for most PV ships. Is a usual fit for most PVP ships. So bear that in mind. Let's move on. If you would push kindly to page number eight on your slide, page number eight, you should come on module sizes. Now, in EVE Online, you can fit whatever you want size-wise onto any ship you want. The only problem is the amount of CPU and power grid they use may not fit your ship. And being that it does not come online, it's literally useless. However, that said, it is always a good way. It's a trick a lot of people use to transport big mods that actually take a lot of cargo space by actually adding it to their um, fitting windows. For example, you can put your uh, a massive mod on a frigate size ship and just move it about. The same mod will not fit in the same frigate's cargo hold. Game mechanics for you, but it's fun to know if you're moving stuff. Now, that said, the slide here will tell you that Modules come in either micro, which is not a thing, by the way. So just go ahead and scratch the first one. Small for your frigates, medium for your cruisers, large slash heavy for your um, battleships. And last but not least, your extra large for your capital class and titan class ships. Again, we're not going to be covering that. They're just huge, humongous, and expensive. All right. If you please move to uh, slide number 10. Slide number 10. Again, we're covering most of this quickly. So we can get to the practical, but feel free to come back, have a, tick, have, a, have, a have a proper read of these. They are useful information to have. Now we should currently you we all should be on slide number ten. Rigs, rigs are fantastic things. You will hate them a lot because when you take a rig off, you destroy them. And sometimes you're putting some expensive rigs in, and you just will, will rage silently as you take them off. Now, Tech 1 ships have three rig slots, which is quite nice, actually. Tech 2s have two rig slots. So putting Tech 2 rigs on a Tech 2 ship makes more sense. On the other hand, Tech 1 ships allow you to tad, increase more facility to your ships with the, tech, with the three slots they have. Now, the good thing about rigs, anybody with any skill can use rigs. You don't need skills to use rigs. You just chuck them right on your ship from day one. However, if you have the proper skills for your uh, rigs, they reduce drawbacks. Meaning that if you're fitting, let's say, a stipple, an RT stipple, very tight, and you don't have the right rigging skills, you won't be able to bring the guns online. Well, at least all the guns. Once you get your rig skills up, the drawbacks of the power grid for the RT will be reduced by almost a chunk of 20%, and you can bring all your RT guns on your very nasty stipple online and either instant pop frigates, or generally go into a glorious low sec battle with them. Moving to uh, slide number 11, something that is a very important thing. A lot of you already know this, uh, some of you don't. If not, we're going to learn penalties, stacking penalties. These are important. In, e in EVE, you're going to think, my god, I've just figured out and discovered a module that adds penalties on my ship and have 380% over my current status. That doesn't work. We have, why? Because we have something called stacking penalties. If you have a mod or several mods that do the exact same thing, they will get penalized the more you put. The graph here demonstrated perfectly. The effectiveness of one mod is 100%, two comes down to 86. 
all the way down to, 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 to zilch all by number eight. So the question a lot of people ask me is how many is good? Two, and, and I mean two. If you are going for PVP, two, no more. Right, moving on from stacking penalties. So two for PVP, two, two mods are more than enough, especially if it's your gun damage amplifiers or your missile amplifiers. For PVE, on the other hand, you can fit up all the way up to four if you want a rat or if you want to do level fours, that's perfectly fine. Especially your drone damage amplifiers can go all the way to four and they will still be very effective. Slide number 15 brings us to tanks. A very important topic. It has its own classes, of course, in, in the uni. Uh, as a whole, you can either armor tank something, as this, this, this slide shows. You can either armor tank something, you can either shield tank it or speed tank it. Speed tank in the case of smaller, smaller, of course, uh, ships. Shield tanks uh, in the case of kiting ships in particular. So if you like your playstyle to be that which circles your enemy at 20 or 30 or 40 kilometers, chipping away or blowing away at him, shield tanking is the way to go for you. And of course, armor tanking for, for bigger, brawler, heavier ships that get into their faces and blaster and more close quarter combat style of finding a way. In the cases of armor, you can either active tank them or buffer tank them. Active tank meaning that you actually put an, an actual active mod that returns your um, HP, such as uh, an armor repair. Or buffer tank it. In the case of the Protei we saw a few slides ago, you can just put a massive... Uh, amount of um, a tank on it. Just just increase your raw effective H, uh, HP and, and pray to, to, to Bob that you live long enough to kill your other enemy before you die. So, buffer tank. In the case of shields, you'll have one more on top of which after buffer, and you'll have a passive um, option as well. Less so in PvP, more in PvE. For example, uh, ratting, nullsec, ishtars are predominantly passive tanked. You put enough mod on him that the passive shield regen does all the job. And once you hit 50%, it'll be at its 80% recharge rate. When you hit 25 or 25, I think 7%, it'll be at its maximum HP uh, effectiveness. So, and if you go down beyond that, you're dead anyways. Speed tanking is fantastic when you just literally want to tackle somebody down and get out before shit goes wrong. In the case of ratters, a lot of, again, all stake ratters do shield, passive, slash, speed tank a lot of the rats in all sec. It's a thing. In the case of which one you should pick to do what, always depends on the type of your engagement, the enemy you want to kill, and what kind of ship you're flying. You do not want to be taking a ship out that's armor bonus to be a shield tank kiter. That makes absolutely no sense. And we'll get to that in a moment when we're trying to fit a ship. Now, let's quickly go to page 16. We're going to touch on turrets and missiles in the next two slides. Now, torrents, I'm, I'm sure you've tweaked around the game. A lot of you have been around long enough definitely to know that you can have four weapon systems as a whole, generally speaking. Either you have RTs, you, your blasters, or your lasers, and, and, and they're just all fantastic in so many ways, and they're all considered as torrents. And once you're training up your skills, they all belong to one tree skill-wise, and then once you bring that to max, you've maxed most of these out. And after that, you have your missiles, which are a whole different kettle of fish. All have their pros and cons, of course. And they usually come, I dare say, they all come either small, medium, or large. As logic will tell you, smallest have the less requirements of CPU and less damage, not necessarily true at all times. And of course, largest have the most amount of, uh, of damage and the most amount of P uh, CPU and, and power usage. We will come to application of damage. You'll find a lot of medium guns apply a lot better than a lot of large guns. So it's not necessarily the case. The biggest gun guns does the best damage and you need to put the biggest on your ship. That is not a thing. Missiles are just wonderful all around. Particularly the Kaldari race excel at this. Uh, Tad, the, the Mimitar as well. And they have a whole different range of uh, gameplay associated to them. Most of our kiting ships you will see. Today we're going to fit a Caracol. And our character will be using either a heavy missile or a rapid light missile, which is a cruiser size uh, uh, missile system. Do read these when you have time. Please move on to a sl uh, slide number 18. Now, exceptionally important when you're fitting a ship, they will tell you two things in, in EVE. One, uh, cap is life. 
So uh, once you, you'll, you'll completely understand this once an Ashi move completely needs you out in the middle of battle. So cap is life. And also range wins you the battle. So dictating range is it. I'm gonna give you a prime example. I'm gonna give you a prime example. You have two brawlers, both warping at zero of each other, and one of them is using blasters, and the other is using rockets. One, in the case of our rocket friend, has an afterburner. The other one has a more micro uh, warp drive and blasters. What happens is both ships are gonna scram the shit out of each other, point blank. Initially, the engagement starts. And they're gonna damage away full blast overheated first 10 seconds of the battle the blaster mwd is is doing a fantastic amount of damage mostly because his optimal range is 2k but because our rocket friend has an afterburner which is not affected by the scram burns ever so slowly even though he's webbed ever slowly away away from his target until he gets to the very wonderful effective range of 8k which is his fantastic range for his rockets and his other enemy cannot put damage on him, and he wins the battle even though he's in structure. The amount of time that he's taken to come out of the range using his afterburner, he's taking that structural damage. However, at the end, he owned the battle because his enemy could not put damage on him because of the range. So in EVE, propulsion, range is your life. If you can dictate range, you can dictate the engagement. If you don't like that engagement, you can leave. This is very true for kiters and shield ships in particular. They use micro warp drives. If you're on a squishy micro warp drive ship and you get caught, you're pretty much dead. So kiters, get, if you don't get caught. Brawlers, if you're a brawly ship and you like shooting people in the face, you need to always put an afterburner on. Do not. Some people will tell you, don't put a propulsion mod, put an extra tank. Don't listen to them. Always put a propulsion. That's the first thing we ever fit on any ship when we start off. Again, I cannot emphasize the importance of these two. Uh, mods. Now, if you, if you, of course, take your time and read these, they will tell you, if you're new, do please read these. They will tell you the afterburner doesn't give you a lot of speed, but also does not bloom your SIG radius, and it can be scrammed and stopped. So it'll keep, continuously keep on working and add 112% to 159% to your speed. Kiting in an afterburner is not a thing. It will outkite you and you will die horribly. If you want to kite people and you want to have some serious amount of speed, you're going to put a micro warp drive on at 500% at the very least onto your ship. You can do some stupid amount of speed with it. However, if you get scrammed, it just stops, you're dead. And of course, you might get slingshotted as well. So there's a lot regarding propulsions and a good time as you pro progress through the game, you will come to, to know all of them. We're going to leave this now. We're going to, we're going to talk about propulsions in the, the UI when we're doing PyFi. Now, moving on to uh, slide number 19, your mods. Now, not all mods are made equally, and not all mods are useful for every situation. The prime example is the warp core stabilizer, or, or the warp core stab. If you decide to go into PvP thinking, I, I think I have this ingenious idea, I'm going to be a ship that doesn't get pointed, and if I get pointed, I'm going to have a warp core stab so I can completely warp out and make a fool of the other guy. That's another thing, because... The thing about warp core stabs, if you have two of them, that literally reduces your targeting range to, to, to fuck all and your scan resolution, which means it'll take you a good five minutes to lock anyone who is probably in your face. By which time you probably have three scrams on you, you're dead. So in the case of warp core, the, the, the cloaks, the inertial stabilizers, you'll see that they have certain negative effects. In the case of the two top ones, they really hurt your scan resolution, which makes it equally, makes it very hard for you to target people in good effective time. And of course, inertia stabilizer blooms your SIG radius, which is bad if you're an instant warper. All right, Hamid, they asked me, I'm going to fit a ship. What are my major basic points about fitting a ship? The first thing to do is to go straight for the propulsion. Always ask yourself, what do you want to do with this ship? If it's PvP, what kind of PvP? At what range? Now, if your range is close, you put afterburner. If your range is far, you want to you be speedy, you put micro warp drive. Propulsion, the first thing you put on a ship. After that, you think about armor. Now, usually logic says that if you are a close range brawler and you have an afterburner, you want to put armor. That is, of course, if your ship is, is bonus for armor. And if you have armor, then you want short range guns. And of course, if you're speedy, you want shield, mostly because shield gives you a lot more um, mobility. And of course, you want long range weapons. We'll demonstrate this when we're fitting both uh, the Caracal and of course the Thorax. Or two other ships, doesn't really matter.
After that, once you fit your propulsion, your armor, and then your guns, then you can fit everything else. Your E-War, your target dampeners, your webs, your scrams. If you are a dedicated DD in a fleet, your job is only to put damage. You don't even need the scram. You just need a serious amount of firepower. If you are initial tackle, you're going to need an investment in both your point and scram for your initial tackle and scram, and etc. So the role you play and the mods come with it as you're about to do it. Now, that concludes us with the slideshow. So go ahead and close the slideshow. And what we're going to do now, we're going to open Pyfa. We're going to start off by generally speaking a little about the UI as a whole. We're not going to get into anything with too much detail yet, but we're going to, we're going to start off. So top left corner, you have your very boring, very usual uh, file. Forget that. Forget even edit. Forget file. Forget edit. If you do click on edit, though, you will see two important things come down. Uh, one is to clipboard and, of course, from clipboard. Most of you are tech savvy. So you know that from clipboard means that you have something in your clipboard and you will paste it onto your um, Pi file. This is very useful when you are on your external websites and you found a fit you like. Somebody's lost a ship either on Z kill board and you want to take the ship right off to work with it. So you go on to your Z kill board, you export that ship and then you copy it to your clipboard and you come straight to PyFi here and you import it from your edit little button onto your PyFi system. Very straightforward. Same thing applies when you want to export a ship from PyFi to somewhere else. You just click to clipboard and of course give you a range of options. We'll work on that. Most of the goodies we have here are in your Windows tab. Now, if you click on your Windows, uh, Windows uh, tab, a whole range of goodies are going to fall down. Your character editor, your damage pattern, your target resist, your implants. Now, in the case of your character editor is where you go, and this is one of the things PyFi does very well, to put in your in-game character and his skills. Once you've put your character and his skills using your API within PyFi, it will from there on tell you what skills you have for the ship you're fitting. Can you actually fly the ship you're fitting? What skills you need to get to... to, to to, to fly the ship you're fitting, and a whole range of goodies about your power, grid, and CPU. Because, of course, power, grid, and CPU are also skills that you can acquire and improve on. So if you have a low-class character, low-level character, I mean, you will not have as much as power on a standard ship as somebody else who has all fives. We're going to start off with all fives today, though, but, but you can add your own character using your character panel. Your damage pattern is a good one as well. Your damage pattern allows you to define what kind of damage is coming towards you. Hypothetically, let's just say hypothetically you're in, uh, let's say, an Atron, a standard Atron, a uh, Galante ship. Galante ships are predominantly bonused towards um, thermal and kinetic it, defensive-wise. And so if somebody shoots kinetic or thermal at you, you'll live a tad longer than if somebody starts shooting you with EM from the bat. Your damage pattern allows you to define what kind of damage EM-wise is, or, or kinetic-wise, is coming towards you. And that's very good when you want to calculate the effective HP of a ship. Also very good if you want to make sure to, that you have put a ship together that does not have a massive hole in it. If you have a massive EM hole or a massive kinetic hole in your ship, you're doing something wrong. Your target resist is the exact opposite. It allows, it allows you to calculate, well actually PyFi calculates, how much of a damage you're implying, what kind of damage you're applying to what target. Let's say you want to make a ship that wants to rat in, let's say, Syndicate, Serpentis. So you want to go kill Serpentis rats. Serpentis rats, of course, have a weakness to Thermal and Kineticate. So you then change the damage output of the ship you're fitting to Thermal and Kineticate, and then you'll see how much damage you put on a Serpentis ship, etc. Very good. Uh, your implant set editor allows you to put implants in. Right, there's a long list of that. We're going to leave that be. That's, that's Arnold's problem in, in PyFi 102. The one we're going to focus a lot on today is that graph, that graph tab on your Windows. That, that is just tells you a whole range of wonderful things we will get to in a moment. So this Windows uh, little tab here is just fantastic. We love this. We will come back to this later. Right below it, you have your Ship tab, your Market tab, your Ship tab, your Market tab. You can click between them. Initially, you're going to choose your Ship tab because you want to pick a ship. And together, we're going to do the following. We're going to go and click that little magnifying glass right next to it, and we're going to click on it. And then you're going to write Caracal. Once you find in that little magnifying glass, you should have an option to just click on a caracal, and then it'll ask you to, to put a name on it. You can put whatever name you want. So put caracal fleet test. So the, the first thing you see is that this ship you just clicked on, you might have just randomly clicked on this, comes up, 
and you have absolutely no idea what this is. So do, do me a favor, go on anywhere in the middle of your screen, go ahead and right click, and there should be a ship status. Click on ship status. And this little ship status caracal should pop up, and you should be able to read traits at the very, very top left, and it should tell you everything you need to know about the traits of your caracal. In this case, it tells you the caracal is bonus towards 5%, rapid light, heavy, and heavy assault, and it gets a whooping 10% bonus to velocity for, for most of them, for all of them. And this is per skill. So if you get that Caracal Cruiser, uh, Caldari Cruiser to five, that's just, that's a lot of bonuses. What this tells you, and this is true for every ship you pick, is that you have to fit either rapid lights, heavies, or heavy assaults on this thing. If you put a blaster on a Caracal, I will shoot you in space. I will find you, I will shoot you. I will know. This is the choice you have. So, and once you have rapid light and heavy assault, you will definitely know this is a kiting ship. This will not, you can try for heavy assault missiles, but to be fair, you're not going to do very well brawling with a caracal. So, and of course, when you say maximum velocity, this is definitely a kiting ship. So we're going to fit it according to what we said with shields. We're going to shield this caracal up and give him speed. Now, which brings us to our market tab. So right around the little ship tab with the magnifying glass, a little bit left to it is your market tab. If you click on your market tab, a range of goodies should be immediately visible right below your market tab. Now, at first, when you start off this game, and particularly when your first few uh, months, you're just going to be confused as, as, as fluff when it comes to these things. But as time progresses, you're going to absolutely love them. Right off the bat from the top, we're going to briefly explain these, very, very briefly. You have your ammunition charges, self-explanatory. Whatever ammunition you think, right here. Charges, right here. Cap boosters, right here. So generally, they're the fantastic place to go if you want to tweak with your ammunition type. Below that, deploy, deployable structures. Um, if you expand it, you'll see that your very favorite to kill item, the MTU, the, the mobile tractor unit, is there. I mean, I'm sure more, some of you have killed MTUs. It's a fun thing to do. It, it severely grieves other people. Or if you've deployed an MTU, you'll know that your deployable structure, anything that you chuck out of your ship to deploy is right here. If you below that are drones, again, self-explanatory. This also includes salvage drones, fighters, and bombers to your carriers as well. So all of them, literally just every drone there is is under that tab. At below drones, you have the implants and boosters. That is a long list. That is a massive headache. We are not going to touch that. Below that, we have rigs. Now, a genius decided to put rigs before ship equipment. Now, I don't know why, but hey, it's a game thing. So rigs, again, you have your entire list of rigs. If you expand that, a whooping list of just everything drops down. Again, first class, this is a bit intimidating, but once you realize that they literally belong to certain categories and it's very, it's very simple, you're going to be fine with it. Below rigs, you have your ship equipment. This is the creme a la creme of, of most of the equipments, mods, guns, you name it. Uh, shield rigs, uh, not rigs, sorry, shield. And uh, your uh, armor stuff is right under this little little equipment section. Subsystems below that is for Proti and Tech 3, forget that. Recent used modules, self-explanatory. So in the case of the Caracal, we're going to go ahead, people, if you will please, click on Ship Equipment, expand it for me. Below Ship Equipment, come all the way down, middle of that list is Propulsion. You're going to click on Propulsion, and then you're going to go ahead for me, click on Mic Warp Drive. So now you have the list of all the Mic Warp Drives available in this game. Well, again, keyword being active mods available in this game. Now, right under, under that little box of, of, of market stuff, you should come down and you have now the names and CPU and power requirements of every micro warp drive in the game. If you go all the way down, all the way down, you see a 5 mega Newton micro warp drive 2. If you please click on it for me, not double click, just single click, it should light up blue. And to its right, there should be 17 and then 25, respectively. Again, this 17 is your power grid, the amount that this mod needs in order to uh, become online, and your CPU requirements for this mod. That, these, two, these two numbers are very important when you're picking your mods. Also, these are your normal mods, keyword normal. If you go slightly below that, you should see the very bottom left part of your window, normal, faction, complex, and officer. Your normal mods, self-explanatory, are the standard mods that are sold and bought. Your faction mods are faction, which are more expensive, but better. Complex, even more important, uh, expensive, even, even better. And at the end of the day, your officer mods. 
Do yourself a favor. Don't ever, ever buy an officer mod in this game. Don't ever fly with one ever in this game. Because you're going to die and you're going to be on a kill board somewhere. And a lot of people, including myself, they're going to make fun of you. Just because you were stupid enough to buy a 6.5 bill mod, which a, a, a tech 2 could have done easily. Give or take. So, go back to normal. So, click back to normal. So, forget the officer mods. Come back to normal mods. And let's... I would like to draw your attention to the mods. We're going we're gonna to try to make sense of the madness, which is this list of, of micro-warp drives. Again, if you're new, you're looking at this, you're thinking, holy Jesus, what is this madness? Focus on the numbers. On the very left bottom, you have the 5 meganewton micro-warp drive 2. If you go up, you'll find that all the way down the top, you have your, well, good God, what is that? Your 50,000, I think, micro-warp drive meganewton. And somewhere in between, you have 550. Common sense will tell you that the biggest mod goes on dreadnoughts and car um, carriers. The, the, the least one, the very bottom, with the least amount of CPU and power goes onto your frigates, which brings you to caracals, which are cruiser-sized ships. You can go ahead and fit a 500 mod if you want on it. it it'll, it'll still, you can still fit it, but it won't work. 50 is your keyword. 50 meganewton is your keyword for your uh, caracal. Now, when you come to your 50s, you still have a choices of 50. Now, this is true for a lot of mods where you pick them. This is called metas. Um, in the case of, if you're if you're very new, you're gonna only be able to fit the uh, the, uh, the 50 mega newton tech one. And if you've trained your skills up far enough, you're gonna put the tech two on it. In the case of the caracal, we're gonna double click on the micro warp drive tech two, please. So if you double click on your mod already blue, it should automatically then put it in the middle and on your current active ship. When your mod gets fitted on your very first mid slot, take a look at all the numbers popping up to the right of the mod. That these are important because they'll get even more important once you fit guns. You have your 165 immediately to the right that shows how much power it initially needs to just be fitted. And respectively, to the very right side of your resources tab on your window, you'll see a, a, a green bit coming under your uh, power grid. We'll come to that in a bit. To the right of that, 165, you have your 50, that's your CPU. And here's another one. Minus 15. If you hover over it for a second, it will show you capacitor usage. This, is, this becomes very important later on when you're doing more of these and you want to actually see how much CPU this mod burns. I want you to do something else for me. I want you now to, again, go back to your uh, choices of propulsion in the case of the micro warp drive. And I want you to find the 50 mega Newton YTAC T8 compact micro warp drive, which, which is technically above the micro warp drive, Tech 2, and double click on that for me as well. I want you to put two, I repeat, I want you to put two micro warp drives on this caracal, please. And the moment you do that, you will see that to the left, both will pop up. You'll see that both mods are in. Now, to the left of the mod, you see a little green check mark, and then above that, a roundish greenish kind of thing. This indicates which mod is on, which mod is off. Now, we all know, if not, we now know that you can never put two propulsion mod of the same type on any ship. You can't have two micro warp drives because you feel like it. It's just not a thing. One of them has to go offline. Now, currently, as we stand, the, the compact micro warp drive is currently online. Now, if you compare the two together, you see that the compact one uses less power grid, uses less CPU, and a whooping two and a half um, less uh, power grid usage. If you want to see that more clearly, just click between the two. So if you click on the, the round green circle, it should then put on that mod, uh, activate the mod, and then this, the, deactivate the other one. And you can compare, this This way you can compare. You can actually compare to see which mod uses most more power, more CPU, and, and, and how much it costs. To the right of the far right, you see that Tech 2 costs 4.6 mil, while the compact one is 35k. These are important informations that, that you will need. Now, one last thing before we move on from this. If you go on, on that little, little green check mark of yours, if you right click on it, you see a flame, a kind of a red symbol pop up. That's for overheating. If you want to see how a mod is overheated and how it will react to overheating or what speed or percentage it will add to your whatever, that's you right click on it. This is particularly good for guns. So if you have a list of guns that you want to overheat, this is how you do that. You right click on them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and unoverheat your micro warp drive. Just click left on it. 
and double click on your compact one, remove your compact one. We don't want two micro drives. That was just an example. Hamadi asked me, how in Jesus am I going to fit a ship? First thing you do, determine range of engagement, put the propulsion on it. From there, you can work on things. Once you've done your propulsion, then you need to think about what? Tank. In the case of, of, of Yi here, Caracol, we're going to shield tank it. So go ahead and go back to your market tab. Go all the way up your ship equipment. Minimize your propulsion. And we're going to go to shields. So that's the third one from the very bottom. So shields. If you expand your shields, a list of your shieldy goodies will, will drop down. This is, of course, your shield remote shield boosters. That's your logi. All the way to your resist amplifiers. That's, that's your passive ones. And a few other things. What we need are shield extenders, which is, I think, the third from the top. Shield extenders. Now, when you click on your shield extenders, you'll have capital size all the way to small size mods available to you. Now, remember, in, in EVE, you can put any size mod on any ship. It's all a matter whether it will come online or not. In the, in the face of the caracal, we're going to put large shield boosters on it. Extenders, sorry. So click on your large shield extender, and only four of them will pop up. You have four choices. Depending on which skill level you have, you can either put a Tech 1 extender or a Tech 2 extender. In the case currently we're standing, we're going to put not the Tech 2, but the FTAC S9 on it, which is the, the second one from, from below. We're going to put one on for now. Double click, put one on. You can see that it hasn't ruined anything. Your, your, your CPU and your power grid are fine. And you're going to put one more on it as well. Let's take a moment now to go to the right side, and I want to the right side of the screen. The right side of the screen will have a range of information that you're going to need, which are essential to your fitting. From the very top, you have your resources. Now, resources uh, show you the different types of weaponry and, of course, um, calibration. And then you have your CPU, which is this little gauge, this little green gauge of CPU and below it, uh, power grid. To the right of that, you have your uh, drone um, uh, bandwidth and your drone we're fitting drones on a ship so far you've put two shield extenders and you're kind of like 50 percent which is not bad so two extenders give you quite a bit of tank below your resources to the right side you have resistances resistances determine your effective hp not to be confused with your raw hp and you have a range of red green glow sorry excuse me not green red uh, gray and golden um gauges this of course if you look at it very clearly shows your shield resist second armor resist your structure resist and the very bottom one which is a little gun of some sort ammunition of some sort you have 50 percent, 50 percent. sorry 25 percent indicator which shows that across the board 25 percent of everything is coming toward you image wise we'll come down a bit when we've put the two large shield extenders, we have raised the effective HP of our ship to 15.4K. Now, this is currently calculated based upon the resistance you have. The more resist you put on a ship, the more effective HP you'll have. If you see that EHP button at the very right side of your little colorful gauges, if you click on that, it will then show you your raw HP. It means this caracal has 10.9K raw HP. Effective HP is a good way to go. But again, it depends on the damage type coming toward your ship. Right. So, so far we fit, we fit your uh, mid slots. Let's go back to mid slots. Let's go back to mid slots. So mid slots. Now you have a caracal that's, that, that's propulsion. It's going fast enough. And uh, how fast we'll see in a bit. And you have enough tank on it. What we need is to plug some holes. In a case of the caracal to the right resistant bar shows you that your EM, this shows that your resist for your shield caracal EM wise is nothing. You have absolutely nothing EM resists. You also have very poor thermal resist, 20%. Meh. I'm talking meh. 40% kinetic resist. So that's just not good. You always need resists. You always need to pluck these holes. In the case of the EM, we're going to leave rigs to pluck that hole because that hole's a big hole. We need some rig power. So we're going to go back to your market bar. Go to your shield hardeners. So right around shield, again, market bar, shield hardeners, all the way down to shield. Uh, you click on extended shield hardeners. We're going to fit the adaptive shield. We're going to click on the adaptive shield hardener. And we're going to double click on the adaptive Invo Field Tech 2, which should be 1 and 44 in CPU. And we're just going to put one of those on your ship. 
Why the adaptive? Because you have no idea what kind of enemy you're going to go against when you're PvPing in EVE. So you can't go decide, I'm going to put an explosive only mod on this. So you need to be uniform and uh, overall have all of them resist wise increased. You now have one last mid slot. Now, in the case of the Caracal, you've tanked them up, you've propulsioned up, you're going to leave this mid slot for tackle. Because you might go into battle and you might want to, to, to grab somebody. You're beating them to death and you need to hold them to make sure they don't leave. In the case of the Caracal, Caracal you are kiting. So the only tackle mod suitable for this, you've guessed it, is a point, not a scram. So where do we find the points? Again, minimize shields. Go all the way up into your market tab, ship equipment, electronic warfare, which is the second on the top. Electronic warfare, and then all the way second to the bottom of that is warp disruptors. So, in the case of the warp disruptors, we're going to put a, a, a tech two warp disruptor, which is the bottom one, warp disruptor two, bottom one, into our mid slots. Now, this will will put the warp disruptor in your current active ship. Again, remember I told you when you put a mod in, it'll give you a whole range of information all the way from the right. Uh, if you look at and and go along the blue line, so in the case of the mod, it will tell you that the optimal range for this warp disruptor is 24 kilometers. So you've put your warp disruptor in tech two, and that 24K is very important. You want to be able to determine how far you can actually point somebody. And here's another fantastic trick. If you go onto your left and right click and overheat this mod, it should then show you that you can actually point somebody overheated at 28 kilometers. Now that's a fantastic range to be shooting somebody with a caracal that's you have plenty of time to bail out you have plenty of time to maneuver and to be fair they won't be able to shoot you for, for jack shit unless they have some range some some sort of range weapon we have fitted our mid slots how do you fit your mid slots some some people will th will drop the large fs shield extender and just put tech twos some people will not do that some people will actually drop one whole shield extender as a whole and put an e-war instead it all depends on what kind of play style you have, what kind of engagement you want to go into. That's how you do it. And this comes with time and experience in actual play. And of course, a few other tips and points from some other people or websites you've taken fits off. We'll come to that later. You've fitted your mid slots for uh, kiting. Now you have your low slots. Now you have your low slots. This once upon a time, I would have a chat, I think it was Kellen, Kellen Doctors. Damage control. Is always, you always need a damage control whenever you want to go into PvP. It will give you that extra 2, 3, 10, 20 seconds of life, which will then help you realize where in God's name you went wrong and why you died. So damage control is very important. So go ahead into your, uh, of course, market bot again. You're going to be using this a lot. We're going to go put a damage mod in low slot. Always have a, a damage, mod, uh, damage control mod on, on, on your, in your low slot. I'm going to explain to you exactly what this is. So where do we find the damage? One of the questions you're going to face a lot is where in good God's name are these mods? Which which category is damage control? And again, with this, it's just time, mate. It just you go through these a, a lot. And once you you've gone through fitted 10, 15, 20, 30 ships, you'll by heart know where damage control is. So damage control uh, control is in hull and rip armor. So again, under your ship equipment, hull and armor, you have your damage control, which is the fourth one from the top. And if you click on your damage control, you'll have your damage control list of available mods currently normal wise pop down. And this is important. On the very bottom, you have your damage control tech 2. A lot of the times, you're going to have really, really tight fitted ships, and you're not going to be able to afford to put a damage control tech 2 in. And this is why that little tab we have here next to CPU and stuff is becomes useful because you're going to be like, if only I could take 10, 10 CPU off this current mod. Oh, look. The IFFA compact damage control is right there with 20. So in the case of the Caracal, we can afford to have damage control 2. So put damage control 2. But if we ever have CPU problems, the first thing we're going to downgrade is this damage control 2 to an IFFA compact damage control. That makes sense. Now, we have our damage control. We have our, our, our mid slots. We're, we're tanked. We're looking good. What we're going to do now is we're going to add more damage to this ship. Now, we don't have guns or weapons on this ship. But we know we're going to put missiles. And with every weapon system, there is an associated damage dealing or damage in, um, increasing mod. We're going to go to your um, ship equipment again. Your turrets and bay. This is the very bottom one. 
In your turns in bay, the very bottom turn bay, you have your weapon upgrades. Once you click on your weapon upgrades, it'll, it'll drop down another list. In the case of missiles, ballistic control systems are what increases your damage for your missiles. Now, once you click on your ballistic, uh, ballistic control systems, the list of available mods pops up from the bottom one. Go ahead and put as many as you can, in this instance, three damage control system twos onto your caracal. Now, the question people ask me is why put three of these? Did you just tell us for PvP, keep two? Yes, you may opt to remove one of these damage controls for nano fiber or whatever you want that helps your ship fly the way you want to fly it. This is a personal taste. I want this ship to be able to push out a ridiculous amount of damage. Some instances, I might get one of, one of the, put one of these down and put a nano so I can make it more maneuverable. If I'm going, depending on where I want to go. Is this instance, I just need a kiting damage ship because I'm thinking I'm going to grab cat, 10 other my friends, and we're going to be fleet of 15 of these characters going out. So, all I really need is a lot of DPS or a lot of alpha. Boom, three damage controls. If I was passive tanking this, I'd be using these for passive tank mods. For now, low slots, why we love low slots is a question you will later on and, uh, ask and answer, is because low slots allow us to put damage mods, drone damage mods, torrent damage mods, missile damage mods. One of the big issues of armor tanking ships is because you'll have less of these damage mods to put. We'll come to that when we're tanking your thorax. Now, so currently as we stand, we have low slotted finished, mid slots finished, and it's looking good. Now comes the part, and this, I once had a chat with, again, Kellen was the person. He says, look, once you fit your tank, your damage mod, then always fit the guns last. Always fit your guns or weapon systems last. Why? Is because you'll have a range of, of options. You can put big, big guns with big CPUs if you have them, or you've put all the good ones in. Uh, I mean, all the right mid mods and all the right low mods in, and then you can put tad weaker guns, but uh, your ship will still be effective. If you go off from the bat, from right off the bat, pick the biggest mods you have, and because of your power usage for those mods, for those guns, you have no mid proper mid slots to, to fit, no proper low slots to fit, you will die horribly. Now, in the case of the caracals, we're going to go on to torrents and bays. We're going to minimize that weapon upgrades, and we're going to go straight to missile launchers. If you click on missile launchers, a whooping list of, of, of missile launchers will drop down. Again, time will, will tell you exactly what we want. And because we love rapid light missile launchers, trust me, you love rapid, rapid light missile launchers. That'd be like the middle ones, right above rap, <laughs> rapid torpedo launchers and below heavy ones. If you can, and I mean if you can, always fit, start off by fitting the biggest guns you can on your ship. How do we, how do we find out which one's the biggest guns? I, I've just started this game. How do I know? Look at power consumption. Most, most times than none, you'll find that the most power usage is the biggest gun. In the case of the Caracal, your rapid light missile launcher tech twos are 77 in power usages. Go ahead and fit as many of those you can. Just literally like spam double click on this rapid launcher and see how much of this goes up. So you can just spam it until all the high slots are full. So you fitted the biggest guns you can. Now always go tech two if you can. Some instances you want to go tech one, but that's a different story. We'll leave that for now. So far you have fitted your caracal. And if you go ahead to your right, top right, if you look at your CPU and power gauges, the green ones, you'll see that they have actually rested in a very lovely little position of both being not full, but near full. That's where you want things to be. That gives you more control over what to do from here on. If, if they were going red for you, then you had to either cut down on CPU, throw a, a large shield uh, extended away, do a range of other things. But for now, all is well. Now, since we have it here, we're going to do something. We're going to explore the right side of our EUI a bit more. You already know resources and, of course, um, your weapon torrent, uh, high slot, etc. And then you have below that, you have your CPU, your gauge, and below that you have your resistance profile. Below that, you have your recharge rate. Now, come down to recharge rate. We're going we're gonna to analyze this little right part uh, of, of this UI, which is, is a fantastic part of this UI. So your recharge rate will tell you what kind of tank you have. Now, if you look at this, you realize that, congratulations, you are buffer tanked. Why buffer tank? Because you have, you, you, you have no active reps coming your way, and your passive shield regen is 45 HP per second, which is like dirt. It's, it's, a rat can kill you with that. So you are buffered. How do you know if you're buffered? You have 21.1K in effective HP. 
up top in your resources. Resilience. What am I saying resilience? Yes. Resistance. My bad. Excuse me. Now, beyond recharge rate, below that, you have firepower. Now, if you look at firepower, you look at your weapon, your drone, your volley, are all zero. Why are they zero? It's because you haven't put ammunition in your guns. You fitted your guns, but there's no ammo in your guns. Now, how to fit ammo? Very simple. Go on to your top gun in your top high slot. Go ahead, click on it. It'll go blue. Hold shift and then click on your bottom gun. This should highlight all of your guns at the same time. You can also control click this, but why would you? And once you have highlighted all of them blue, go ahead and right click on it. And then on the very top one, you have charges. Go ahead and in the case of the caracal, I would advise everybody to shoot Connecticut at all time. Go ahead, click on Connecticut, and then you have a list of ammunition coming up. If you're new, this is another headache you have to go through later on. What ammo should I shoot what? With time. Don't worry about it. It's all, all good time. In the case, we're going to put... Give me a second. We're going to put Scourge Fury Light Missile. Very top, very bottom one. So Scourge Fury Light Missile. So if you click on that, you'll get your Rapid Light Missile Launcher fully loaded. And how do you know it's loaded? Because a whole range of goody options come up all the way right from your guns. Again, I told, do not underestimate the value of the information the middle section gives you. Right now, if you click on any of your guns, or in this case, launchers, if you have your gun list, and if you click on your high slot gun, you'll see that your power usage is 69.3 CPU usage. And here's, here's what you want to love. Your optimal range. Your optimal range is exceptionally important because that will tell you what range your guns are effective and what range you should probably not shoot at people because it's just dumb. In the case of your caracal, it is a kiting ship. You can blow the shit out of everything out of 47 kilometers out. So if you're at 60 kilometers, don't shoot anyone. It's just, you might be able to lock him, but you won't be able to shoot him. Your missiles won't have the reach. Anything under 47, shoot away. Volley away at it nonstop. It'll tell you a meter per second of your volley. It'll tell you the, 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 the cost of your uh, guns. And of course, at the end, it will tell you uh, what kind of ammo you're using. So this, this, this here is very important, especially if you want to, if you find range for, for torrents, particularly for torrents for your optimal range and your uh, fallout. Use it. Now, that's it. Come back to your right side, to your right side of your UI, uh, the screen, the firepower. When you put your ammo in, now you see that your uh, weapon system is now uh, uh, updated. So you're currently, as we stand, you have 239 DPS, if you're all five, of course with this character using the current system you have, the current guns and the current ammunition. And then to the very right, you will see that you have 1,008 in volley. The, the difference, if you're new, the difference between damage per second and volley is that guns fire things at a certain rate. Your rate of fire comes into damage per second. So once you click on the fire button, your missiles will be launched. It will take your gun to cycle three, five, six, ten 10 seconds, depending on whatever it is, and it will fire again. When the initial launch has hit your target, that is your volley damage. That volley is going to be 1,000 damage in this case, which is 239 calculated per second, which will tell you that your current, your caracal is a semi-alpha semi ink ship as opposed to um, anything else. But again, rapid lights are a different story, so you'll learn that in good time. Also, you see that drones. Now, your question is, can the caracal fit drones? Can it? The only way you can find out is to actually go on your drone tabs, click on a few light drones, see if they go into your bay. If you can fit light drones to your bay, and then you can, you can equip them. You know what? Let's do that right now. So let's forget your turns for now. Let's come back. We'll come back to this firepower and then capacitor later on. Go all the way up to your market tabs. Go to drones. Click, click on combat drones, which is the first one dropping. And in the case of the character, click on your light scout drones. So light scout drones, and we're going to do acolytes, gentlemen. So on the very bottom, acolytes tech 2. Why acolytes, you ask me? Because they're f the fastest of the, the drones. You will learn all of these in good time. If you are good at reading stuff, you can actually right-click on any of these mods and just read the stats on them. And you can then compare it on your own time. Because they'll just PyFi, if nothing else, is, is a fountain of knowledge. So go ahead and click on your drones. And as you're clicking on your drones, you see that top right gauge of your drone capacity is filling. And if you click one more time and you have three drones in your capacity, you'll see the right tap gauge of your drone capacity go red because you have one too many drones too much. 
So go ahead. Now you have your drones. Go ahead and double click on your acolyte in your cargo hold on the bottom section. So currently, my I have three acolyte in my drone bay in my ship, which is the bottom part part of my UI, and I can't fit three. I'm gonna double click, and I'm gonna remove one of the acolytes if you double click or just right click one, and then my right drone gauge should go all green. And do you see that little X next to your acolytes in your drone bay? If you click on that X, it should bring it up as a check mark, and by doing so. The right part, your second drone gauge, which is your drone bandwidth, should also go all green. And if you look down to your right firepower section, you should now have drone damage added to the total of your firepower and your volley on your caracal. Now, this is not a particularly important a caracal because, I mean, a caracal only can fit two light drones. I mean, meh. But it is exceptionally important when calculating drone boats in the case of the Galente Ishtar, for example. Now, moving on on the right side, so firepower is all about that. We can then decide on, on patterns of fire later on. Below that, you have your capacitor. This will tell you one very important thing. Total amount of capacitor, and below that, it says something lasts. It says lasts one, point, one minute, 10 seconds. What does that mean? And of course, then you have your calculation of your capacitors, pluses, minuses, the right, we don't care about that. What we care about is that capacitor section when it says lasts 1 minute 10 seconds. This is a very important part. Remember I told you in EVE they'll tell you that cap is life. With the current fitting you have, and this is important, with all your mods active, all of your mods active, your ship has 1 minute 10 seconds in capacitor. What does that tell you? It means that in an engagement, when all shit goes loose and you've overheated everything on an enemy, you have one minute and 10 seconds, give or take, to decide the engagement of that battle. Which tells you that this caracal cannot micro warp drive like a crazy person for more than a minute round. So you'll not be able to kite people to the end. Which then will tell you, because it's a buffer tank, this is a fleet caracal, not a solo caracal. If this is a solo caracal, you would have to then manage your capacitor as well. It is never a good idea to go into solo combat on your own with a minute cap. Again, this depends though. Take that with a pinch of salt. It depends. On frigate level combat, things are intense and combats are fast. So one minute should be more than enough for, for a lot of intense frigate one-on-ones. However, for cruiser sizes, you don't you wanna you want to definitely have some more cap inject. You want to have cap injectors. So you gotta drop that large the second large shield extender and put a cap capacitor recharge battery in there or something else. So far, we have fitted this caracal up. We have drones, we have guns, we have shield, we have damage mods. Last but not least, rigs. Now, rigs give, give us a fantastic amount of options at the very end when you fitted something. You want to think, should I add more capacitor to this car caracal? Should I make this caracal last longer? Should I make this caracal fire faster? Should I make this caracal go faster? Should I give this caracal more tank? Whatever you think of doing, and this is fine tweaking your caracal, It'll come to the rigs at the end. And that's why you leave your rigs the last. First thing, the most essential thing you need to do using a one rig slot as a whole is pluck that stinking EM hole you have. Again, if you look at your resistances, you see that you only have 38% resist on EM. So if a clever person finds you and a caracal, lutch such as yourself, puts some EM missiles and it shoots you with EM, you will die a lot faster than he will if you shoot him, for example, explosives. So the first thing you do, you go pluck that hole. Now, it's a, there's an expression in EVE, say, pluck holes, pluck EM holes, pluck resist holes, etc. So go ahead and go close your entire, not UI, your ship equipment. That is your marketing. Go uh, close that and go uh, expand your rigs. Go, go on to rigs. We're going to rigs. We're expanding rigs. Now, everything you can think of doing to a ship within the, within the realms of reason, of course, is right here in rigs. We're going to go straight to shield rigs. That's the second one from the bottom, shield rigs from the bottom. We're going to go to medium shield rigs. And remember, I told you we can fit almost every mod onto any ship. That does not hold for rigs. You need to have medium rigs for medium ships, large rigs for battleships. So medium rig, shield rigs, click on E. And in the case of the caracal, you want to go and click on the first one, the medium anti-EM screen reinforcer. Go ahead and double click on it. And then you should see, I'm hoping with a lot of glee and a lot of joy, to see that your EM hole is now completely um, sorted. And you have 
percent resists, which is pretty okay. I mean, your kinetic is a tad lower. You can add more if you like, but again, you're a kiter. You're not supposed to be taking damage. If you're taking damage, you're doing something wrong. Not always, of course. Leaves you with two rigs. Now, you can literally do whatever you want with them. Again, because this is a fleet caracal, this is because I'm fitting this for a fleet role, and I'm going to have more people, I would love to have a bit more tank on this. So in the case of shield rigs, you're going to go back to your medium shield rig, which you're currently on, and you're going to go find, and this might be a tad tricky, your core field extenders. Well, good God, where are they? They should be like fifth, sixth one from, from below. There you are. There we go. So you have your core field defense field extenders. Go ahead and put both of them on and watch your effective HP go to 31k. In the case of rigs, gentlemen, rigs, remember rigs always have drawbacks. Even if your skills are all five, they still have drawbacks. Rigs for Caracal, shield rigs will always bloom your signature. It means that right now your Caracal in, in Sig Radius is a gigantic pig. It's a huge pig, huge. So bear in mind, you, you don't want to be too close to any major engagement, especially major, major, big, big battleships that also shoot from range. In the case of the University Foons, Typhoons, for example, the Unifoons will, will, will make mincemeat out of you with that Sig Radius if they're shooting cruisers at you, cruiser missiles. Right, currently, ladies and gentlemen, this is a proper caracal fit for a fleet engagement. Five, six, seven of these will wreak havoc on most ships, especially small ships. Now, weapon systems. Rapid light missiles of small ships to medium ships. If you wanted to shoot bigger ships, like cruisers to battle cruisers and battleships, then you would change your weapon system from rapid light to heavy assault missiles or have heavy, heavy missiles as a whole. This all depends down, it comes down on you, etc., etc., etc. So, that's fit. I have a quick question about the signature. It's far away. Uh, when you ho hover over the signature, the 1140, uh, it says something about probe size. I was wondering what that is. Is it how hard it is to scan you down or something? To my knowledge, yes. Yes. Uh, your signature has a massive... Combat probing is all about your signature, meaning that if you are a small frigate without, any, uh, without your MWD on, Combat probes will have a harder time unless you're a massive ship. They combat probe bigger ships faster. So it is something. Signatures also how fast they lock you. The size of the probe is a bit new to me. I've, to be fair, I've, I've never dealt with this. But I'm sure a bit of Googling and a bit of uh, on your side will, will completely answer this question. And you can tell me actually some, sometime in the future. Who knows? Brilliant. I have a question. So By I way. know that the um, signature size does play into how much damage you take. From oversized weapons is there somewhere that we can look as a resource as far as what numbers are good i'm sure if you google the, we have a lot of very experienced very knowledgeable boys that have done the math on these uh, yes you can most likely google it somewhere my always knowledge of this is the bigger you are the more damage you take as you said All right because then you could get hit by like medium and large weapons as opposed to just small very true very true in the case of for example the character with this much steel extenders and this much yes you'll have You'll have a harder time speed tanking with this, even though you're going something like, I don't know, I think right around about 1,000 something, 2,000 speed. Uh, the math's right here, actually. About 1,000, uh, about 1,900 speed, actually. 1,900 meters per second. You will still get hit pretty hard if somebody's shooting you with, uh, with medium weapons. But well, again, especially that's, if you're out of that's, 48K, too, yeah, because then your transversal velocity is not very high. Very true, very true. Again, you can, you can calculate all these. You can use PyFi to calculate these. And a lot of our boys out there, we have intelligent EVE players. They've put the math up. So in the case of Googling. Right. Gentlemen, we have, we have fitted this ship, and now we're going to quickly go fit a brawling ship. And this is going to do it very quickly. Let's say you've already fitted this ship. Now you want to do something else. You want to fit another ship, but you don't want to lose this ship. This ship automatically saves, as the case of uh, uh, Galen has, has showed us. What, you see that little name of your ship on the top bit? So your middle of your screen, right around the top bit of your screen, you have your caracal, caracal, whatever name you put on it. Cat is scary, for example, is a good name. To the right, you see a plus sign. If you click on that, a whole new page should pop up. A whole new empty page, empty slate, everything. Oh, excuse me, gentlemen. Excuse me, my bad. Let's back up, back up, back up. Go back to your caracal tab. Let's go back to your caracal tab. My bad. I forgot stuff. Let's go to the right side of your screen. We had your power, firepower section, and then we had your capacity section. And below that, we have your target, targeting, and etc. section. Now, this is very important. This, this, this is like a fantastic part of, of PyFa. This will tell you a lot about your ship. Currently as your ship, in this case of the Caracal, if you look at it, currently as you are fitted, you can target six ships 
limited to, of course, your skills and the ship uh, itself. The range of your lock is 71.9 kilometers. Your scan resolution, now do me a favor, go ahead and hover over your scan resolution for a second. If you hover over your scan resolution, you'll have this wonderful little box pop up called lock time. Now, it will tell you exactly how, how long it'll take you to lock these targets. For example, you're not going to be killing any pods anytime soon because it takes you 7.7 .7 seconds to lock a pod. On the other hand, you will definitely be shooting the shit out of any cruiser size. Go three and a half seconds, you've locked and pointed them and you're shooting away. So that's valuable information to have. Sense of strength as a whole uh, it's, is, is how, how, how fast you lock as a whole. It, sensor strength plays a role, especially in E-War as a whole. You want to come to that later on. That's for Pi Phi 102. Think E-War. Sense of strength, think E-War. Drone range is a fantastic thing. It'll tell you that way beyond your actual weapon range is your drone range. So if you have a pesky little frigate at 50 kilometers coming your way, you can let loose your acolyte 60 arch kilometer and, 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 and send it toward him to hopefully either deter it, deter him or just murder him, depending on how stupid he is. Because he's not going to be locked. He's not going to be pointed at 60 out. But again, drone range, very important. If you're fitting PVE ships for our uh, sentry drones, very important for you. So you want to you get this drone range as high as you can. The ship speed is very important. Go ahead and overheat your propulsion mod. Go ahead and right click and overheat your propulsion mod for me. That's right click on your green checklist. And then you'll see that this caracal can do 2700 meters per second overheated. You can overheat this caracal depending on your skill for something between, I don't know, three cycles max, I think, or two, three cycles max. And that'll give you more enough time to get the fluff out of any bad situation. Especially if, you're, if you have a bigger cruiser ship that you need to run from. Your align time will tell you that you are uh, probably fluffed if you need to align get out somewhere sticky. Because your 7.4 second align time is just bad. Do me another favor though. Go ahead. Go back to your micro warp drive and right click on it. And right click one more time on it. This way the round circle should pop up and you should have... Uh, completely disabled your micro warp drive. You should disable your propulsion. Once you disable your propulsion, take a look at your align time. You'll find that your align time is now five seconds as opposed to seven seconds. We should tell you very simply that propulsion mods add to your align time. So if you're making an instant warping frigate, such as a interceptor taxi, you need to make sure the align time, excuse me, the propulsion mod is offline in order to have instant warp. Right, go and turn back on again. Your signature radius, as boys point out, your warp speed is 3 AU, which is just meh, cruiser size, which is meh, it's just ugh. I mean, you're better than a battleship that has two, but good God, I mean, compared to an interceptor, you're just garbage. And of course, you have 450 meters cube in cargo space, should you decide to take any um, dancers out or ammunition. And last but not least, at the very bottom, you have your price, which is very important when you're fitting ships. You want to fit ships for, 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 for killing, make sure they're not too expensive especially if you lose them. So this ship alone costs 11 mil, fitting 2.7 mil, and your total 32 mil. Once you get bored, do me a favor, go back to your uh, market, later, not now, go back to your market window, go to your propulsion mod, and go put one of those officer mods on your ship, and, and then check the price tags on it. You can just put a standard 500 mega newton officer mod on it, and see why I said that you should probably never leave uh, with it. All right, quickly, I'll now go to your new tab, your new shiny ship you're about to place. You're going to go on to your oh, ship. ship. Can Excuse I ask me. a question? Yes, Kellen, fire away. Scan resolution lock times list. There's a number in parenthesis at the end of each entry. What is that? That's a, that's a good question. That's the SIG radius, I believe. Good man. I did not know that. Ah, so that kind of goes into the question I was asking earlier. The SIG radius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the different ships. Well, SIG radius becomes an important part. We're well, going to go on graphs, graphs in a moment. And, oh, and, and, and signature radius. Thank you. All right, SIG radius is an important thing. So we're, going to, we're going to go on a graph in a moment and do SIG radius. But before we do, we're going to do that, we're going to quickly go fit uh, um, another ship. So go onto your tab. Go onto your ships. Go on that little magnifying glass like we did last time. Go ahead and this time put a thorax. Let's put a thorax. Right. If you click on a thorax, yes, please. And name it, whatever you want to name it. The thorax should pop up again. Empty, empty slots, high slots, mid slots, low slots, etc. Now, the thorax, 
Now, looking at the thorax naked, you should immediately know that the thorax has a lot more low slots than has mid slots. In the case of one more, I think. And you want to armor fit it. If you right click on the empty spot and look at the statistics of the thorax and the traits of the thorax, you will see that the thorax has uh, bonuses to torrent damage. That's hybrid torrent damage. So you want to put medium hybrids on it. So you don't want to be putting rapid lights on this because you have to just no, just no. All right. So quickly, like we did last time, we're going to go into market tabs. So we always go to ship equipment. My advice to you is always straight go to propulsion. We're going to determine that this ship is going to be a close quarter brawling heavy armored ship. So we're going to put afterburners on it because that afterburner might be able to allow us to dictate range later on against another thorax that doesn't have an afterburner and then we can kill him. So right off the bat, go and put um, a 10. In the case is 10, not 100, not a 10,000, not a 1, 10. Mega Newton YTAC 8 compact afterburner. We don't need afterburners to do magic. We just need them to, to, to work a bit. So we're not going to put tech two. We have your, um, we have our afterburner in. After that, we're going to go straight to our damage control. Let's go back to our ship equipment, your hull and armor. After hull and armor is damage control. We're going to put damage control tech two. So far, so good. And we're going to think about tanking this thorax. So we're going to leave our mid slots for now because thorax are armor tanks. Armor tanks are low slots. So we're going to look at our low slots. We are fitting this thorax for armor. So hull and armor, armor plates. And we're going to put the massive 16 millimeter armor plates on this thing because the thorax has good power, a CPU, uh, and of course power. So we can afford to put this thing. I put one and no more than one. So double click on one and put the tank stang instead, the compact one, second below just more effective again experience will tell you and we have now three low slots so what we're going to do is we're going to go click on again we're, we're still in hull and armor we're doing most of the armor bits we're going to go into um we're going to go uh, onto our, our armor plating we're going to put plates on this thing that's our energized plate but four from the top plating you'll see your energized adaptive plating and we're going to put two tech two energized adaptive nano membranes all, all this is doing is just giving resist or armor and get all the way to resist and, and, and 50. We're just plucking those holes. We still have one low slot left. And if you have a low slot left, put a damage amplifying mod. In the case of tracks, we can go back all the way back to torrents and base. Weapon uh, upgrades, because we're using hybrid weapons, we're going to choose the... Uh, the magnetic field stabilizer. So right now, that's our low slots covered. Currently, a bulky, heavy ship, but we have a considerable amount of of, of EHP and resist. Now, let's go back to our mid slots. We have three mid slots we can use. In the case of the thorax, we're gonna need to uh, tackle people. Remember, thorax is a brawling ship, means you're in somebody's face. Now, when you get into somebody's face with a thorax, the first thing they want to do is get a hell away from you. And they will want to leave. They want. They will want to dictate the range. Let's say you got lucky and you managed to grab our caracal, the same caracal we 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 made. You are now point blank by sheer dumb luck, warped zero on the guy, and you have him. Now you have to hold him. The first thing you want to do is put a scram on your on your thorax, because if you cannot scram something, you are useless as a thorax. So go all the way up back to electronic warfare. Again, you're in your equipment electronic warfare this is your warp scrams which is your last choice on that list and of course put a tech two warp scram why a tech two is because of that nine kilometers range and if you look at the the stats the more we can scram something in range the better it is for us as a whole a lot of people will tell you when you are fitting ships for close quarter you need webs you need to be able to hold the ship down or they will leave your range of engagement and if you have your caracal grab tackled, they, generally speaking, they have more speed than you do. So you need to put a mod that reduces their speed. In the case, in this case, it'd be a status webifier or web. Again, in the same electronic warfare, put two tech two webifiers. Why two webifiers? Because first of all, you have two mid slots. So does the stasis webifier does that affect stack? Um, webbing um, webs are stacking penalized, so the first web will slow down your target 
to 50% of its speed and the second web will slow it down another 25% or so. Wouldn't it be uh, multiplicative? They don't, there's no stacking penalty, but uh, the second one would be a percentage of the new speed? Oh, right, of the remaining. So if he's going 100 and you put one web on him, he's going 50, and you put a second web on him, then he's going 25. Yeah, exactly. Yes, webs will reduce it most of the time by 50 to 55 to 60 percent, depending on what faction webs you're putting on what. And that's a very good thing. I don't know, have they introduced fall off or not on webs? I don't think the new ones that came out of battleships. I think webs are still fine. Add your webs to status webifier tech twos. And you should be able to tell me, using your Pi file of your screen and the center of the UI, that the range of your webs are 10 kilometers and what is the effect they have. If you hover over that 60%, you'll see speed reduction. If you hover over your status web of our tech tools, you see that 60, they both take off a good chunk of 60% off your enemy's speed. That is, like Kat said, if you're, they're doing 100, they'll take 60% off of that 100 which leaves them with what, 40 meter per second? And then the other 60% will take a 60% off that 40. He feels like mud and he, he, will, he, he will then be, because you have an afterburner and you probably only have one web on you, then you probably do faster. And then you can then dictate the range of your guns. Which brings us, to let's put some guns on this goddamn thorax. Right, so. Uh, can so, I have so, a quick question while we're there on, about the scrams? Fire away. Uh, so about the points, say the scram two adds two scram points. Uh, how many how many points do you need to get away? Is that two or three? To get away or to, to hold? No, no, no. Let's say I'm holding and I put um, what do you call them the the stabilizers on. You will need three stay if they put two on. Actually, correct me if I'm wrong. I've never actually done the calculation on this. I think, I you have think to get zero. I think it needs to get so zero. Gets two. Out. If it zeroes out, I'm in, I'm I'm in the clear. Yeah. Un unless he's is is pointing you with either faction points or, uh, or he's using an infinite point, which is a, a hick. If you're referring to deckers, or we deal with a part of the uni, a lot of times they have uh, either faction webs that put um I think three worth of scram points on you, or an infinite fucking hick to, to grab you. In that which in that case, it doesn't really matter how many you have. But let's say you're an explorer. Let's say you want an explorer. And you want to fit your, what's that ship? Give me a second. A ship that has four low slots. Make sure that nobody can grab you. Then in which case you put four low, low uh, in your four low slots, four max stabs. In the case of that Amar exploration ship, tank one one. And somebody needs to put either two scrams on you or four points. Okay, so 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 even if I have four scr uh, like anti scrams uh, stabilizers, he would he would need only four to get me. Four points. Or two scrams. Well, no, okay, four no. you would still be able to get away. Oh, yeah, so oh, yeah, that's... yeah, you have to nullify the number of points they put on you. Yeah, to get away. Yeah, basically, you're flying around with zero. So. I'll do, I'll do a quick Google, Google about it uh, after class. Do so, do so. Right, let's put some guns on this uh, thorax and then let's get to that chart before people just literally just die. Because this, this is a long class already as it is. Right, uh, in the case of the thorax, you're going for hybrid weapons. So go on to yours ship equipment you're all the way up to your uh excuse me all the way down to your torrents and bays go on to your hybrid torrents click on hybrid torrents and click on your blasters so one click on your blasters go to your medium blasters and a whole range of blasters should pop up from the bottom uh window and then you, and which one do you pick first of all the biggest one you can put on it the case would be your heavy neutron blaster tech twos. I will tell you for a fact that your neutron blaster tech twos won't fit because you will not have enough CPU. So go ahead instead, fit your heavy electron blasters tech twos. Put as many as you can on your um, high slots, and this should bring your uh, CPU and your power to a very nice uh, 92, 90 percent. Go ahead and add ammunition to your heavy electron blasters. So highlight all your weapons, right click on them. And I want for your charge to put void medium on the very bottom one. Now, void is a fantastic am However, it acts, it's terrible when it comes to tracking. So you're going to need those two webs to just hold somebody down so you can apply your void medium on, uh, on them. So that said, you have your weapons and all this will pop up, of course. And now you have your rigs. Now for your rigs, you have multiple options. Add more tank, add more um, 
speed, add more damage. In the case, we're going to add a bit more tank because we're going to be brawling. So go to your rear, right around the, yes, the very top, excuse me, the very top should be your armor rigs. The very top is your armor rigs. Click on your armor rigs, your medium armor rigs, and I want you to, to put two, and I mean two, uh, medium trimark armor pumps. Those are the one at the very bottom. If you go onto your hybrid weapons, to your medium hybrid weapons, you can put, and, and particularly the collision accelerator adds to your damage. A lot of the other things do other things. They add to your DPS per second by increasing your uh, fire rate per second. I don't necessarily need to, to, to know what is what. I need you to remember the process in which we do or look at other sites and replicate them. But one last thing we're going to do, we're going to go windows, little top, top left side. We do not have any more time to cover all of these, but we're going to cover graphs quickly. So on your windows, go on, open, click on it. That's control G. So if, if you can't find the windows, one of your boards, G. So when you've done, done so, uh, a DPS graph should pop up. Go ahead and expand it, should make it a bit bigger so you can actually look at it a bit better. This graph tells you, what, what is this graph? When they say DPS graph, what do they mean? It will tell you how much of the damage to what, at what range. So this graph is a very important graph. It gives you the graph, the bottom of the little chart, the blue, blue line, you'll see distance to target, and then on the right, you see target signature, and then you have your target velocity. You can input how much damage at what range you will put on this target. Let's go ahead. We have made this thorax, right? So this thorax is a close range battle tanky thorax. Shit, but it's pushing 400 DPS at close range. And if you overheat that, that's 600 DPS. So let's say you have a target at 20 kilometers. Let's say this target at the very top left, uh, sorry, medium, medium left part is currently approaching you of 45 degrees. So go ahead and that part says 0 .0, 45. And to the right of that, you have a target velocity. How fast is he going? Let's say he is uh, a frigate. Let's say he is an interceptor doing 2K. That's 2,000. So put 2,000. And what signature radius, what is a target signature rate. It's all about the size of the ship you're shooting. 50. Cruisers, 120 something, 150. Battleships, 200. And now this is before using their micro warp drive. If you use micro warp drives, you'll have a sig bloom. So if you're a battleship, you go all the way up to 500 in, in, in sig radius. It's an interceptor and he's about what? 75. Let's put 75. 75 meters of, uh, of signature radius. Because, of course, let's just say he's using his micro warp drive. Now, you immediately see your graph change. And this graph will tell you whether you should engage ship, or should not engage this ship, and what, at what degrees you need to engage the ship. Damage from 400 has dropped down to 200, your graphs, when you're modifying them. Because sometimes the graph moves, the colors move, and you think, oh my god, I'm shooting this guy really high on that little point. But you realize you're only doing 10. So currently, maximum damage you will be able to ship at 42k, is 200 and tell me at what range you can put this damage on him less than 5k if this ship comes at you under your guns and literally comes onto zero you will not be able to do any sort of damage on this ship and you are dead or at least pointed until somebody else kills you so the target angle the degree in which he is coming at you is zero let's say he just literally just clicked on approach button coming face towards your thorax and if you just click zero and you, this will tell you that anywhere from less than 5k, you can shoot away at this guy and he will die a horrible, miserable death, being DPS pummeled to death by 450 DPS, right around 2.5, 3k. And he will die very quickly. What this will tell you is that if you have a frigate coming at you at zero point blank, shoot him. Shoot him a lot. Now, the same frigate, let's say he goes into an orbit around you, instead of a zero degree, does 90 degrees. So unfortunately, he has got you at close range. And he is doing 90 degrees around you at best. You're going to be able to put a hundred. If you change that to 90 now, you're going to be able to do 120 at best on him. And this is be even though your thorax is bonused for, of course, tracking as well. If this is some other dumb ship, you have even problems with that. And if he manages to keep his velocity, you won't be able to touch him. So this graph will tell you a range of ships. Now, you can also do one more thing with this chart. You can add two or three or four ships to this and then use their different ammo types to compare and then tweak all of this to see what different damage your different ships will do. 
In the case, I have put two thoraxes in. I have put a thorax, which is a booster killer, and a thorax, which is just a class fit. You will see that my thorax class fit, the one we did today, is the blue line, which is doing a meh amount of damage to any frigate that's coming at him. But the other booster, the, the other thorax I fitted, the booster killer, has more tracking, more damage, and it will do a whipping 200 damage, especially at 5.5k off, and that frigate will die. So you can use these graphs to tweak stuff. Now, if I change this and I make this a battleship, let's just say you have a battleship with 400, a SIG of 400 doing 100 kilometers, 100 meters per second, your graph will change. If, if you do it right now, you'll see your graph will change and you'll apply all your damage at 5k. Why 5k? Go ahead and close your graph. Remember, remember this graph. Go ahead and close your graph. Looking on your thorax, the very middle of your middle of your pie, but if you look at your guns, you will see that your optimal plus fall off is 2.5k plus 1.88 kilometers in fall off. That will tell you that your maximum efficiency is that. So you're going to have most of your DPS at 2.2 kilometers and beyond that, you're kind of meh, over 5k you're fucked. So bear that in mind. So that covers for now, covers our Python 101 plus um, of your fitting. And I will highly advise and recommend that you guys tweak this and, and, and use this. One last thing before you go. Where can I find ship fittings? I, I Recently, I've heard about this fantastic thing called the, the Swipel or this fast, fantastic thing called a Dominix. Where, where do I find fits for a Dominix? I've Googled it and it's given me a 50,000 different Google results. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you one link. This is evefitfinder.com. It is the best place to go to find ships, mostly because it takes directly from Z boards and amount of ships lost in combat at EVE and it keeps it updated. This is not some one guy's opinion that he's put a fit up and he thinks it's the best thing after Swiss cheese. All right? This is actually 50, 60, 100 different thoraxes and, or caracals died in combat in EVE. And that will tell you that about 100, 200, 300 people are using this fit in EVE and there's a reason they're using it. Because it either works or they're doing something specific with it. So you can use this fit to go find your uh, templates and then tweak them to your heart's content. I have a question regarding the target resists. Is that for the graphs or for what do you set the resists? The standard target resist, you know, the, the one on the right side of the UI. Uh, no, the one that you get from the window menu. Ah, we, we actually yeah. didn't have time to cover these as well. Target resists are for the targets that you are shooting at. If you click on target resists, right, you will then have a choice of adding percentages and it will tell you your, your DPS. It will change your DPS. Do me a favor. Follow me if you will. You see your little firepower on the right side, right? Yeah. You see on, on the volley, you, the volley side, a little bit right of the volley, there's a little icon that says toggle to mining yield, right? Yeah. A little bit to the left, of it, find an empty space and just right click empty space, right click, it should say target oh. resist profile. That yeah. will tell you what kind of, pe and then you can choose what kind of people you want to shoot at and it will tell you how much damage you do to them. So what you do is you go to your windows and you go to your target resist. Say you want to go shoot, I don't know, rats in Omar. So they have weaknesses to thermal and to, to the EM. So you're going to put, you're going to change your target resist editor to 50% thermal, 50% EM, and then go right click on your weapons and then just choose your damage output as Amar, whatever you named it. It will tell you how much DPS you do to that ship resist. Also, same thing applies when you want to do your, uh, uh, what do you call it, damage, damage profile. If you look at, look at uh, resistance. Do you see resistance, effective HP, HP, all that little colorful shit, right? Yeah, uniform see, at the moment. Yeah, uniform at the moment. Right, you can then go edit this uniform to be anything else. So if you go to your windows and then you go to your damage pattern, then you can put... A whole range of inputs here. Let's say you're getting shot by Omar lasers. Somebody picked something with a laser gun, a laser boy, shoot the shit out of you. He's gonna be shooting with only thermal and EM. He's not gonna be shooting with Connecticut. So your unified profile means jack shit. So you go change that to 50% thermal, 50% EM. Go right click on your damage um, profile, change uniform to to, to Omar, whatever name you put it, it'll then shuffle your weight to 50%, 50% EM and thermal. I mean, just give you a link so you can see what I'm talking about. But if you click on this, you'll see that I just changed my, my uh, profile to Omar. So I'm thinking I'm getting shot by Omar's ship. 
So I've boosted both of these to 50-50. And once you do that, your effective HP will change. The number will change, saying that you actually have more survivability against Amar ships than you do if you've gone off against the Kaldari ship that was shooting you explosive. Because your resist, if you look at your thorax, has more resist to EM than it has to explosives. So you last yeah. longer. This is very yeah, important for small yeah, gang. Yeah, really good. So that's, that's well, sadly, we didn't have time to cover these uh, properly. Also, crests. Crests are fantastic new things that we added. So you see the, the little tab, you have your Windows tab and all this stuff. To the right of it, you have crests. Yep. So crests. Crest, you can then log into Eve. You can actually log in to uh, the, the, the Eve, uh, what you call it, website, give it permission, and give Pi5 permission, and it will import all your in game saves, fitting saves, onto Pi5 right here. And you can pick and edit those and then load them back onto your game without ever needing to log in to your actual Eve point. So you can use Crest. Crest is a fantastic, this, this, I, I think it came this year. It's a fantastic thing, Crest. But it's a fantastic little software to use. And I, and people taught me how to fit with this. I had a horrendously hard, I had a bad time fitting in actual the in-game in client in Jita. I had a nightmare of a time. With this, I learned very quickly, very painlessly. And to be fair, I saved more money. <laughs>